Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. If this is your first time here, please go down and click subscribe. If you're a return viewer or subscriber, thank you. I do appreciate each and every one of you. If you need IT consulting, go down, click on the WillieHow.com link, fill out the contact form, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. So, I thought that my camera was recording the whole time that I just did this last video, which is taking ESXi uh, 6.5, and marrying it um, up to our UC3200 uh, and using the iSCSI target on the UC3200. Something happened to the camera, it did not record the footage, and so I am actually going to voice over um, this. So we're going to go over there, we're going to voice over. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to configure ESXi and we are then going to install Alma Linux, which is the uh, CentOS replacement, that fork of CentOS or the, the offshoot of Red Hat Linux, because I need that virtual machine for another video. So um, I'm going to do the voiceover. I hope you enjoy it. Here we are on the UC3200. Remember, we've got HA set up. And what we're going to do real quick, let's look at our iSCSI manager. And we have one target. And if we look, and remember we're using our 10 gig uh, links for iSCSI. So let's pull up our network. And remember what um, the address is there. So we're the 10.10.255. .10 uh, dot zero slash 29 network so that's going to give us uh, four or five ips to use there um, so the first controller controller a is dot one the second controller is dot two so we'll make our vmware server dot three so if we hop over here to our esxi server and this is esxi 6.5 now stop before you get all crazy that i'm running 6.5 this thing still has support ESXi 6.5 is still supported as of the filming of this video, which is um, February 7th, 2021. So uh, this server that I'm running on is a server that some people have asked me if I was going to get. This is actually, I took my Unify uh, XG server, the uh, One U server that Ubiquity sent over to me years ago and uh, I installed ESXi on it. So it's got an Intel Xeon D1521. Um, it's got 32 gigs of RAM. It's got an M.2 NVMe. It's got two 10 gig NICs uh, and then an IPMI port. So what we're gonna do real quick is we're gonna hop over here to networking and we're gonna add a virtual switch and we're just gonna call this storage. And now we're already using VMNIC0 as our management interface and where our VMs are going to live. So we're going to use VMNIC1. That is what uh, VMware sees that other 10, 10 gig as. We're just going to leave this as default. So this is going to be quick and dirty to get this up and going. So we're going to go ahead and click add. So now we've got our storage switch. So what we're going to do is come over here and we're going to add a uh, port group. And we are going to call this... Um, storage it's going to be uh, vlan zero we're going to select the storage switch we're going to leave security the way it is and then what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to the vm kernel next we're going to add one we're going to select our storage port group for now we're going to leave the mtu at 1500 we're going to make this a static ip and then we'll expand this and this will be 10.10. .10 255.3, 255.3, and the subject mask is 255.255.255.248, and we're going to leave everything else default. And so now what we've done is we've created that physical NIC, and on the Netgear switch, what we've done is I've got the ports that everything is plugged into. Um, and actually, you know what? I can show you that real quick. Uh, 
I'll show you the switch setup. So this is that Netgear M4300. I love this switch. So we'll go to switching, we'll go to VLAN, advanced, and then we're going to go to uh, port VLAN ID configuration. And you can see that ports 9, 10, and 16 are all untagged and um, PVID VLAN 5, which is our iSCSI VLAN. So these three are all in the same network. So that's how we accomplish that on the switch. So let's go back over here. So now what we've got to do is we've got to go over to storage and we've got to go to adapters and we've got to configure this iSCSI software adapter. So you'll see it is enabled <clears throat> and it is already bound to the storage port group. I didn't, I didn't change that. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add some dynamic targets. We're going to add 10.10.255.1. And then we're going to add 10.10.255.2. And you have to remember that we are not, um, we are not, we don't have any kind of authentication or anything like that on this right now. So we'll rescan the HBA and refresh here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go over to data stores and with any luck, those will now be seeing that target that we created a couple videos ago. So we're going to go new VMS data store. And there it is. Look, so we see almost our two terabyte uh, Synology iSCSI disk and we're going to call this UC3200. <clears throat> we're just going to use the full disk. We'll do VMFF6 and finish. And it says the entire contents of this disk are about to be erased and replaced. Are you sure you want to do this? And we are going to say yes. And so it is going to create our data store. And there is our UC3200 data store. So this is on these super fast SSDs on the UC3200. So what we could uh, try to do real quick, I was having some issues earlier. I think I need to roll a hot patch over to ESXi here. Um, I was having an issue. It's just a little, just a little flaky sometimes creating VMs, but we'll try it here real quick. And we're going to call this just Linux and all right, so we're going to call this Linux. And we're going to select Linux and then the version of, um, of Linux, we're actually going to select uh, other Linux 64-bit. We're going to create it on the UC3200. Um, let's see, we're going to give this one CPU, we're going to give it, uh, let's do eight gigabytes of RAM, we'll do 120 gigabyte hard drive. It's gonna be on the VM network. Um, CD, DVD, we're gonna select the data store ISO and we're gonna to go to HX data store here and ISOs and we're gonna select Alma Linux. Now, if you don't know what Alma Linux is, Alma Linux is the CentOS replacement or the fork of CentOS. I've never installed this before, so we're doing this together. And for now, we're just going to select everything as default. Then what we're going to do is we're going to click on our VM. We're going to power it on, and then we're going to launch the console. And we're going to hit install.
go. Let's reboot this. Use of the product is subject to the uh, license agreement, and it is there, and we accept the license agreement. <clears throat> so we're going to reboot real quick. And looks like we are booting Alma Linux, Alma, Alma. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't <clears throat> researched to see if it's Alma or Alma, but it could be either. And uh, we are going to continue to use this ESXi 6.5 sys <clears throat> 6.5 system. Once I send the UC3200 back, we're going to continue to use that, use this with our. Um, 1621 XS Plus. So we got our Linux installed. It is booting now. And come back. You'll you'll know the video we're going to use this for um, when you see it. Oh yeah. So license license not accepted. We're going to accept this. Done. User creation. Lily. Admin, try to only run as root when we have to, and then we're going to click finish configuration, <coughs> and um, that is it. We should have a, a bootable system here. All right, that's it for this video. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Please uh, comment. Please share. Please subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. If you need that IT consulting, go to willyhow.com, fill out that contact form, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. If you'd like to support the channel by using all of our affiliate links, they are down below. They don't ch change your price, but they do kick a couple bucks over to the channel. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.